Okay, so this is six reasons why R is great for business. And this is a, again, introductory webinar. It's something that we really wanted to do for some, for people that are, you know, kind of at the beginning stages of their data science career, data science transition, um, that may be deciding, you know, what tools are out there and where to go and what might be useful for them. Uh, and we've got a lot of stuff in store. So we've got two application demos. We're going to be talking a lot about machine learning. Um, and we're just going to be talking a lot about R. So it's going to be really cool. Um, R is my favorite tool. It's my tool of choice. Um, and I know, David, you use R a lot. So you've been using it for several years now. And you're yep. getting pretty, pretty oh, experienced with it. Yeah. So it'll be a good one if you're just starting out. Um, quick overview, kind of agenda for the day. We're going to do about 10 minutes of introductory information, and then we're going to get into the two demos. And that's really where we're going to fo focus you know, a good bit of our time. And then at, after we get done with the demos, we're going to give the six reasons why you might want to use R for your business analysis. And it's kind of like the most compelling things that I'm aware of with R, the reasons that I chose the language uh, over the vast number of options that are out there. Um, David, would you mind introducing yourself? Sure, I'm David Curry and I have a company called Sure Optimize and we're a marketing analytics company and we help other companies get customers and grow. Okay, and I'm Matt Dancho, I'm the founder of Business Science and I'll actually be talking a little bit more about myself so I'm gonna hold off until then uh, when we get to the first section of our presentation. Yeah. Okay, cool. So thank you guys for coming. Um, what I wanted to start this presentation out with is kind of just giving you some background about myself and my journey because I think it's gonna resonate with certain people. Um, and uh, I, I really just wanna talk about why I chose R out of the, ex the existing options that are out there. So, just a little bit about me. Um, at a high level, I'm a consultant and a trainer, uh, an educator. Um, I have worked with a lot of different companies from our studio to S&P Global to MRM McCann, which is a huge marketing agency, uh, and even NVIDIA, the deep learning experts, and, and, uh, and they have their own deep learning institute. Uh, I've created several R packages. Some of them are very popular. Um, they've combined total uh, over 250,000 downloads. Probably the most popular of which uh, is TidyQuant, which is used for financial analysis. That one itself has about 150,000 downloads. And then uh, TimeTK for time series machine learning and some other stuff. Um, and then most recently, over the past year and a half, I've transitioned into a uh, launching an online university. We now have over 600 students and I'm totally psyched about it. It's called Business Science University, named after my company, Business Science, where we teach people how to apply data science to domains like marketing, finance, general business, and more. H HR, we'll, we'll see that in this, uh, in this lesson. So that's at a high level. Um, so when an, it came down to determining whether or not which language is uh, the best. There's two that emerge, and you will hear a lot of people in uh, the Python camp and a lot of people in the R camp, and it's, and for beginners, what I've seen is that it, it depends on where you're coming from. And unfortunately, a lot of the guidance out there is just plain wrong. So what I wanna do is I wanna kind of give you the perspective of where I came from and where I see kind of the two paths of the two different types of data scientists that are out there. So the two types that I have, I have noticed as I've been creating my, uh, my, my business and as, as I've been working with data scientists and companies are kind of the, either the software forward or the, the more business analysis forward. And um, the way I kind of break it down is I make it very simple. If they've learned software first, then they're probably going to be more oriented towards Python. And that's just because they've had experience using uh, object-oriented programming languages, maybe not Python, but maybe Java, or maybe you know, some of the other programming languages, JavaScript, um, and, and so on. Uh, they tend to come from a background of computer science or information technology, 
And if you're in that kind of background, Python actually tends to be a little bit more um, friendly to those people just because they're used to it. However, that was not my background. My background was actually on the other side where I learned business analysis first. So these tend to be data scientists that are coming from either business an analytics degrees, mechanical engineering, which is, is, is what I have, and I kind of gradually integrated into the business, uh, or statistics degrees, um, econometrics or economics degrees. Those are the types of individuals that I see that can, that tend to like R a lot better than Python. Um, and also these users, they tend to be power users in Excel, you know, uh, using a lot of VLOOKUPs and pivot tables and maybe even some VBA, which is Visual Basic, the programming language that comes with embedded in, in Excel. Um, or Tableau, if they're using a lot of Tableau or even Power BI, and they're starting to become like super users of those products, then those are the people that are really aligned well with R. And, um, and what happened with me was, so I, I am a business analysis first. My degree is actually in mechanical engineering, but as I kind of grew into analytics, um, as I started to, you know, become a manager and then I became a director at a company and then, you know, I had people that I was managing and I was having to analyze a lot of data. I found that R was the right choice for me. However, it wasn't a direct path. And I'll talk a little bit about that here in a second. I was a power user of Excel. I use Excel every, probably like 80% of the day, every day I was always analyzing data. I was always talking with my salespeople, you know, trying to say, Hey, you know, why don't we try this a little bit differently based on the data, you know, trying to point them in the right direction. Um, I was really good at Excel. Um, unfortunately, Excel had some limitations to it. It wasn't very good at managing large data. And uh, I eventually found the need to, to go to a better tool and my options were Python and R. So I initially started with Python. Uh, however, I felt very out of my element. And what I mean by that is I was working in Jupyter Notebooks at the time, and I was just having a really difficult time with the Python syntax. I was having a difficult time trying to explore data and remember the syntax and remember, you know, kind of what, um, what, what I should be using, all the parameters and the functions and, and this and that. And what ended up happening was uh, it just, just felt wrong to me. Um, and I later then tried R. So after about, you know, a couple of months of using Python, I just, you know, set it aside. And then I did a little bit more research and I found out about this programming language called R. And uh, I switched to R and initially it, it felt good. I won't say it felt great because there was, this was before the tidyverse and before some of the other things I'm going to talk mm -hmm. about. But, um, it, you know, it was still a little bit like banging my head off the table for, you know, probably that first week. But after that week of pain, uh, it, it then started to feel a lot better than Python did for me. And this is just because, again, it's that background that I had more statistical, you know, I had a degree in mechanical engineering. I didn't really know code, but I knew how to explore data and switching to R felt more like exploring data using statistics to solve problems rather than trying to figure out what the syntax is in Python and using a general programming language that's more for object-oriented programming. Um, okay, so once I switched to R, I began focusing more on the problems rather than the syntax, and that was after that first week of kind of banging my head off the table. Um, and then I realized, you know, hey, this is really awesome because it's designed for statisticians. Uh, it, it's really, you know, got a, a wide range of just different packages and, and tools out there that are already pre-designed to be able to solve my needs. Um, and then I later found out about this new thing, which it wasn't really called the tidyverse back then, but when I started to learn uh, ggplot2 for visualization and, and dplyr, um, these are some packages that are kind of in this group of packages that all work well together, and they call that the tidyverse. So when I started finding out about that, that really made things a lot easier to learn. And I kind of wish I would have learned using that. Um, and then now it's got a ton of machine learning and data science capabilities. So as I've seen the language grow over time since I started using it, 
they've added more and more and more really high performance uh, packages, and we'll even talk about a few in this lesson. Um, so when I first started learning R2, I do want to mention it wasn't just a straight shot to the top. Like I didn't just, you know, oh, R is the way to go. And then all of a sudden I'm, I'm, I'm an expert. That's not how it happened at all. In fact, I struggled for quite a bit, even when I transitioned from Python to R. Um, and the reason was, is because I was taking courses that were kind of more designed for statisticians and, and um, especially life sciences and bio and biology. Um, those were the were the available courses at the time and the books weren't really designed for business, which is what I was trying to apply it to. So what ended up working really well for me is when I designed this package called tidy quant, which was for me kind of a passion project, uh, where I had to, um, where I was learning a lot about finance at the time. And I was having to constantly, you know, work around things that were not already that were built in R, but they weren't kind of connected together. So I built, TidyQuant as the solution to, to tie everything together. And when I started, when I stopped doing the courses and started doing this project uh, related to, to TidyQuant, my passion, um, that's when I learned way more than I would have ever learned before. So um, that's how I got good. And then what sense worked for me is then uh, after getting that first you know project, which happened to be TidyQuant under my belt, um, I was then ready to start uh, experimenting with other companies beyond just the company I was working at at the time and eventually I worked my way up to be able to do consulting for real companies with real problems that are way bigger than not what I had ever even dreamed of and what I was finding is that I was able to help them with R so it's it's not just a I'm, I'm not trying to you know kind of it's not a smoke and mirrors thing I mean this is legit R really helped me accelerate my career. R really helped me and help these businesses get a lot of value. And at the end of the day, that's what organizations care about. They care about one thing and that's results. And that's what R helped me deliver. Uh, and a lot of it's communication, a lot of it's um, you know, building applications and doing the things that they wanna be able to do to be able to scale decision-making. So R was really good. Um, and eventually I got pretty good at it and now it's my tool of choice. Um, it's kind of, you know, it's a Swiss army knife and it's got everything in it. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of the things, the cool things, the capabilities for business that you can do with it. And that's what I'm going to focus on today. Okay. So that's a little bit about my journey. Um, I got pretty good at R. So now what I do is, um, I focus on solving business problems and, and actually teaching others how to solve business problems. So, um, there's going to be two different problems that we're going to talk about today. There's one, one is a, um, an HR problem and then one is a finance problem. So, um, we're going to be focusing on why should we, why the heck should we even learn R to begin with? And I like to, to start with the end, which is the data product, because that's what the organizations want. And that's what R allows you to do is to, to uh, deliver data products. So the first problem is this HR analytics. It's, it's called employee attrition and it affects a lot of different businesses out there. Almost all businesses have people that leave the company. It's a significant cost. In fact, um, David and I, we were this week um, on a call with several consultants in the uh, business science program. And um, we were talking with one of the consultants and he's doing really well. And he's actually um, got a, a, a client right now who's one of the largest mining companies in the world. And what is he working on with them? He's working on an HR analytics problem. He's saying that you know, this, this problem that they have with attrition, they've actually measured kind of what they expect to happen over the next 30 or so years. And they've calculated that it's a $60 billion problem. So that's a billion with a B. That is a huge, huge cost to that organization. And this is one of the largest mining companies in the world, but it's just one company. There's hundreds of other companies like them out there, maybe not in mining, but maybe in different, you know, in, in food and beverage and um, financial. They all have employee attrition. That's a cost to them. So this is one of the areas where R actually can help. So 
Um, the first demonstration that we're going to do today is we're going to be looking at this new HR analytics app. And if you um, were with me when we first started, I told you that I was up to about 1.30 last night. I've been working on this for the past two days. And it's really cool. It's probably the best app that I've ever made. Um, it's just, it's got a lot of cutting edge technology in it. Uh, but most importantly, it's really well designed for the end user, which is not me. It's designed for managers to make better decisions about the employees that they manage. And it's designed for department heads and executives to be able to drill in and find out what's going on with their organization from a high level to a granular level. And we're going to see that. So it's all about getting business results, showing who in the organization is likely to leave, telling the story about why they're likely to leave, and recommending and trying to give them preventative measures to, to help uh, retain those employees by boosting morale, by um, creating a more engaging working environment, and so on, to be able to really help out and, not, um, and reduce the cost of this massive problem. Okay, so let me just pull up the app to show you. So this is what the app looks like. And this is kind of how it works. So what we can see here is that, and I'm just gonna click the refresh button so make sure I've got, got the app open fresh. So this is an organization that has uh, almost 1,500 employees and you can actually search them by name and that these percentages here are their percentage likelihood of leaving based on an algorithm that's a predictive algorithm that is running under the hood. Uh, the algorithm is called H2O. It's an advanced machine learning package and I teach it in the 201 course, but it's really awesome and it's really accurate. So um, what H2O does is it builds these, uh, this attrition profile, the risk of that employee leaving. So this is Denise, she's about 72% likely to leave. And what we can see here is that um, she's got uh, some employee attributes, what you know, her name, which department she comes from, her job role. But then the next thing that that person sees that's analyzing Denise's characteristics are this graph right here, which tells them the story about why that person is 72% likely to leave. So uh, this is what we call a lime chart. So lime is the lime like the fruit, uh, the green fruit is uh, a package that allows us to take these high performance models that come from H2O um, that are, they may be a deep learning model or it might be a, a, a special type of model called an ensemble. And what Lime does is it comes up with this plot that explains why that model is selecting for Denise so locally, just with Denise, why um, she is likely to leave. So we can see here the first feature is overtime equals yes. So if I'm a manager that manages Denise, I see that, oh, holy cow, she's got 72% likely to leave. I better take a look at Denise. I need to figure out what to do. Oh, here's how I figure out what to do. Uh, she's working a lot of overtime. So that is a uh, big kind of, that's a, that's a feature that's highly, um, has a high dependency or a high relationship with attrition. And maybe I should try and reduce her overtime. Uh, she, well, I can also see, oh, hey, Denise has been here for, for you know, a little bit of time, but her, her stock option level is still at zero. You know, maybe we should try and fix that. Maybe we should get her during her next performance appraisal up to stock option level one. So that way she's getting some stock options. She's been with the company long enough. Um, and then so, so on and so forth. So you can start to build strategies from this dashboard. And then that's great for the manager. And it also gives them personalized recommendations for that specific employee based on these, these line results. Um, one is to seek a mentor, mentorship roles. Some, one is to incentivize specialization. And the other one is to improve the work-life balance. So um, that's very cool. So that is one way, and that's actually probably the most important way for the company is getting a tool like this into those managers' hands and training them on how to use it so that way they can start to you know, drastically improve 
their um, their their uh, organization by retaining these uh, very important employees, these high performing employees. Uh, hey, actually, Matt, I wanted to jump in really quick on this screen. Uh, one thing I wanted to note is this is really important because um, number one, it's 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 important to be able to explain why the why the person's going to leave, not just say that they have a seventy one percent chance, but here are the attributes or the features that um, that are attributing to that high percentage. Uh, and then also with this, um, this tool, Matt uh, said, it, it's called Lime. You actually get insight into the, the, what factors are causing or, or, or what factors are likely to cause a person to leave or what factors are less likely. And um, with machine learning, it's always important to be able to explain the models as much as possible. So. That's one of the things I wanted to point out here because I think a lot of times, especially as a beginner, I know when I first started out, I was just thinking about getting the answer. So for this, it's, is the person gonna leave yes or no? And then you work towards making an accurate model to predict that. Yeah. But the, the explainability is huge. Yeah, no, I'm really glad you brought that up, David, because honestly, explainability is more important than the actual prediction in, to the business because they don't, you know, it's, it's really important to flag who's going to leave, but if you don't know why they're going to leave, then you can't come up with a strategy to retain them. You just know that the machine learning model is predicting them to leave. So this gives you that story that is so critical to that manager because then they, they can come up with strategies to reduce over time, to give, get more stock options, and to do other things in order to be able to better manage this employee. Now, mm -hmm. that, so I'm, I'm really happy that you brought that up. Uh, the second thing I wanted to show you with this app, and this is really cool, is I've got a department explorer. And this is designed for the executive or the head of the department. And what this allows them to do is start at the top of the organization and then drill in. So wh when I click on, say, uh, this organization has three different departments, sales, research, and development. And as I hover over them, they have the different, the median attrition for people in those categories. And then when I click sales, it breaks it up into the different job roles within the sales department. So there's a sales representative, there's a manager, and then there's an executive. And we can see when we hover over them, it's 7%, 6%, and then 21%. So we better check out sales rep, right? 21%. So when I hover over 8%, 33%. So job level one in sales rep is 33% likely. So that year, that company is losing a third of their sales reps. That's, that's insane. So then you can click on and drill into. So this is a lot to take in. So it also has this filter over here. And if I want to just look at the high attrition people, I can bump this up to 75%, click the apply button. And then if I go back into sales and then sales representative and then job level one, now it's a lot easier. And these are the ones that I can focus in on. And then here's what's cool. Oh, Luke Gibson. He's almost 100% likely to leave. So then what I can do is I can put their name. So Luke Gibson. And let me first deselect all. Luke Gibson, select them. Uh, make sure. Whoops. Deselect all. Luke Gibson. Make sure I got him. Okay. I, I see his name is in there now click the apply button. And then what I can do is I can go back in and check out that employee's statistics. And right here is Luke Gibson's 98.5%. And this is why his 98.5% over time is yes. Uh, stock option level is zero. He's greater, his, his uh, distance from home is greater than 14 miles. Uh, so he's, he's traveling a lot for work and, uh, or to get to work. And um, he's also job level one. So maybe he might be a, a person that we wanna try and kind of develop and get them promoted a little bit faster. So as a department head, I can now uh, monitor what my managers are doing and saying, you know, hey, what's your strategy? This is what I'm seeing uh, with these employees. So very cool application. Um, and then one final thing is there's a cool, if you're familiar with Tableau, there's a nice little dra drag and drop. So I'm just gonna make this quick. 
Um, here's how this tool works. This is the third uh, piece, and this is mainly just for exploring the data set. So if I um, just grab, say, overtime, which, uh, let's see, where is overtime at? Right here, I'm gonna put that here. So this, what this does is it shows me how many people are overtime yes, overtime no, and then um, job level, we also saw that that was kind of an important feature, so if we put that here, um, and that, that just creates a, a, a big block, but you can see that over time, yes and no is on the X job level, uh, one through five is on the Y, and then if I put the attrition risk in the fill column, it creates a nice little heat map for me, and I can quickly see that, oh, job level one is, uh, has, um, uh, has a lot of overtime, yes, so these people are most likely to leave. You can see that attrition risk is very light here, so these, this is uh, definitely kind of a category of people that we really want to watch out for. Um, and then you can do other things. You can drag and drop other features like, um, which, which one was the one that you wanted to look at, David? Was it? Um, uh, yeah, it was uh, by department. Um, by, de by department. So if we do um, overtime, take that out. And if we do uh, department, you just drag and drop that. And then we saw that sales and research and development really have high attrition rates, uh, especially for job level one. Okay. So again, a really cool application, something that is, uh, is super useful to the organization. It's built with machine learning. And here's, here's also, this is really cool. And also why I'm excited. I'm going to eventually teach it to business science university students in a course that's coming up here very shortly. Um, just want to talk a little bit about the technology that that was in there again h2o is the main machine learning package that was used and this is why i love r it has h2o i'm i can make 50 plus machine learning models in about two minutes and i just picked the best one and that's what i integrate into my application and it pr predicts super high accuracy way better than linear logistic regressions uh, and that's based on um you know, the, the performance metrics of AUC and log loss. So it's really a high performance, really awesome machine learning library. Um, and it allows you to automate the process of machine learning to an extent. Uh, Lime, again, this is what I was talking about with the explanations. This is super critical. And R has the Lime package, which is great for business insights, actually developing that story from what's going on, not just understanding that this person's likely to leave, but why are they likely to leave? Okay, the second app, also another awesome app. If you're interested uh, in finance, this is gonna be really important for you because financial institutions like hedge funds, they lose a ton of customers and they have a huge problem if they underperform the market. So on average, they'll lose about 10% of their customers if their hedge fund, if their, uh, if their fund drops more than 5% below the market, uh, wherever the market is. So if the S&P 500 index, if they are 5% below that, they're losing a lot of customers. And that's a lot of money that they could have collected in fees from those customers. So managing risk is super critical. Um, and turns out that we can manage risk with R, with the TidyQuan package. So um, what we're gonna do is talk a little bit about this second application that I have here for you, which is a stock portfolio analysis application. So this is what it looks like. And who this, is, this, this application is designed for is to help the money managers, the people that are responsible for picking the stocks and then splitting up their money and dividing it into those, those stocks that they've picked uh, to create a portfolio. So what they could do is they can pick the three stocks that they like, say they like Apple, Google, and Netflix. And what this does is when you click the calculate button, it produces 50 random portfolios and it shows which ones are the best performing based on this ratio called the Sharpe ratio. And that's a measure of risk to reward. So how, how risky is that stock versus how well is that uh, performing? And then what it does is it says, okay, you picked your stocks, but this is how you should divide up that money and split it up amongst those stocks. So it's telling that stock, that, that money manager to put 49% into Apple, 
30% into Google and 21% into Netflix. And that's just the biggest bubble here that, that um, it's basically saying, you know, it's very easy, very intuitive for a money manager. Oh, just try and get the bubble as big as possible and, and put my money into those. You know, I, I like Apple, Google, and Netflix, uh, and then let the app just tell me how to divide up my money. Uh, and then here's the other thing too. If, if they say they pick a bad stock and they click the calculate button. So right now, behind the scenes, 50 random portfolios are being generated. And you can see GE is now in the mix. It's replaced Google. And you can see that it's telling you, whoa, 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 warning sign. Hey, this, this has a very bad sharp ratio. Uh, only put 1.7% of your money, actually put 67% about two thirds in Apple, put about a third into Netflix and put hardly any into to GE because GE is such a dog. So this is what it allows you to do. It prevents kind of, you know, these uh, making an overly risky bet on something that is not likely to pan out. Um, and then it, it also does other things. If I click the wealth index, you can see how this portfolio would have performed uh, versus the S&P 500 over a 10 year span. Um, and you can see it would have done pretty well. And then it also has a, a, a video that describes how to use it for training the, the manager on how to use it. And then they have different settings, you know, if they want to increase the number of random portfolios and so on. Okay, so that's app number two. How was that app built? Well, let's talk about the technology. Tidyquan, my R package that I built. And so it was, again, my passion project. It's now used by pretty much every financial institution out there. It's a really good package for scaling up financial analysis and helping you do stock and portfolio analyses. Uh, we generated 50 random portfolios with it and we calculated the optimal mix and that's what we're doing right here. Next packages. We're using a package called dplyr, ggplot2, and plotly. So dplyr is for data wrangling. So actually taking our data, which is comes in the form of a time series and kind of wrangling it down to get it into the format that we need and then visualizing it with ggplot and then also using plotly to convert that into an interactive plot so if you remember how we could like zoom in and pan on the different bubbles in that chart that was because of the technology of plotly and ggplot too okay so those are the, the kind of the two business cases with the applications and you can see that R has a ton of power and this is exactly what, what companies that I'm consulting with and what uh, people want to be able to do in businesses. The business leaders want to be able to make better decisions. These are the applications, the data products that allow us to do so. Um, so here are my six reasons. If that hasn't convinced you up until this point, then there are six reasons that really kind of boil down why I love R. Um, first one is the reason number one, R has the best qualities for people like me. And when I say people like me, it's the people that come kind of from the business analysis first, statistics background, maybe you're a mechanical engineer or an industrial engineer, or maybe you're a business analyst. R is right for you, and I believe it is, because if you're like me, it really combines a lot of the things that I wanted to be able to do. It has very good reporting tools. It's got very good machine learning packages. I was heavily involved with time series at my job, and then I was also time series with finance. So it's got the best by far time series packages out there. And it's really good for statistics and data manipulation. And now it's even easier more so than ever to learn. So that's why I kind of have this graph here and it has on the bottom here, the data science for, for business rating. So how, how good of a, of a tool is it for business? Meaning does it have good reporting tools? Does it have good machine learning, time series, and, and these things? R is really good across the board for all of this. And then it also has a learning curve rating. And for me, actually Python probably should be down a little bit because Python for me was tougher to learn. Now, if you're coming from a software background, it's probably easier to learn. So it just depends on that background that you're coming from. And if you're like me, business analytics, uh, the choice is very simple. It was R. Um, hey Matt, uh, before you 
before you go on, uh, there was one question uh, earlier on, but I think it fits into this slide. Um, someone was asking if they're fluent with uh, SAS or SPSS or JMP, uh, would they still want to learn R? Yeah, uh, SAS and R are very closely related. I think with SAS, you'll probably have a tougher time going over to Python than you will for R. R, R and SAS, R, think of R like an open source version of SAS. Okay, cool. Yep, good question, very good question. All right, um, another thing about R is that it has tools to manage the entire data science workflow. So that, that means going from business problem to business value. So to be able to do that, you have to be able to prepare data, which is acquiring data, formatting, cleaning, maybe you have to web scrape some data. Uh, and then you get into this experimentation stage. So now that you've got your data cleaned and in a format that you can kind of develop some hypotheses on, you can visualize it. And in business, visualizations are so critical. Uh, it's, it's pretty much the only way to convince people of your argument. Um, and then uh, machine learning, modeling, and validation uh, is, the, is the second phase. And then you get into the business communication stage, which is where you're distributing either via reports, which is uh, you know, the, the, the kind of like the final stage before you get approval to maybe build a web app or, or before you, you know, when you're trying to put together, say, a report on your customers that your executives have asked you for this is what you're trying to do. You're trying to build like a PDF or an HTML report. And then at some point, they're gonna be looking for apps, ways to scale decision-making because you, you and they aren't going to be able to make all the decisions that need to be made. At some level, there's going to be people at the, at the um, basic business level where they're gonna to have to be able to interact with web applications. And that's how you scale data science and generate business value for your organization. So R has a ton of tools to be able to do that. You've got tools here, like some of these packages that I have listed, Radar for acquiring data. Um, it's got very well-developed tools for wrangling data, and it's much, much faster and easier to do than using Pandas and Python. It's really, I can't tell you how, how quick it is. Uh, you just have to try it for yourself, but it's got these pipe operators chaining, and we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a little bit. Uh, being able to work with time series and text uh, and even categorical data. It's just everything kind of fits together. It's like a nicely designed system. Uh, and then when you get into the experimentation stage, transformations and visualization are so critical because you're not, you're, you're coming up with, with complex business questions and how are you going to answer those? You're going to have to visualize information. You aren't just running a machine learning model and it's not going to just spit, spit you out of a solution you need to really analyze it. And in order to do that, you have to be able to visualize. Then you get into the fun stuff, machine learning, modeling, and it's got a well-developed set of tools that even since I started R has grown tremendously. I mean, now it's got Keras, it's got H2O in here, it's got um, this new package called Parsnip, which is really cool for machine learning, um, and recipes for pre-processing data, which is super, like I can't tell you how much of a productivity boost that, that that package is. And then you get into reporting and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second and uh, deploying apps, which we already saw our shiny app where we have H2O and Lime and Dplyr all integrated. So that's where you're generating the business value. You're actually deploying an app and you're giving it to the managers and the, de and the heads of the department and the executives so that way they can understand what's going on in their organizations. Okay, so that was reason one. Reason number two, it's data science for non-computer scientists. And this is, you know, I'm, I am not a computer scientist. So uh, the questions that I would ask you to ask yourself if you're deciding whether or not to do Python or R, and believe me, Python's a really good language, trust me. Uh, I'm just coming at it from a different world where it's not as good for me, but for some people, it's really good. Uh, and if you're trying to build, you know, like self-driving cars, or if you're trying to make the next Uber application, um, or if you're trying to build like, you know, something, something crazy and it's a lot of software driven and you're already comfortable with, with Python, or if you're already comfortable with, uh, you know, Java or, or JavaScript or some of these other object oriented languages, then Python's probably the right choice for you. But 
if you're like me and you're trying to ask questions and answer questions such, such as I need to communicate results to an organization, I need to make web apps that empower business decision making, that to me is R. It just has such a nice set of tools to do that and it's so fast. I can't tell you how productive I am because I now know R. I'm way more productive than I ever was in Excel. In fact, probably 10 to 100 times more productive. Uh, I can, I built a, that web app in two days. I built, um, you know, complex analyses. I've done those in just hours and they used to take me weeks or even, you know, multiple weeks to do. Okay, so reason number three, learning is very fast. So to me, there's two components to learning something and you have to have a good IDE. And when I, when I say IDE, I mean, that's, that's what's called an integrated development environment, but that's basically where you're going to spend most of your life. For Python, it's Jupyter Notebooks. For R, it's the R Studio IDE. Uh, and then the second thing is the Tidyverse. And we already kind of alluded to that earlier, but it's this nice set of, it's this ecosystem of packages that all work well together, consists of packages like dplyr, ggplot2, and several other packages. And they all just work really well to, together, but you'll see why they're so, they're so good and why it's so easy to pick it up. Okay, so this is what the RStudio IDE looks like. And this is amazing. I mean, this, they designed this to perfection because right here you can kind of see that there's four different quadrants and right here I have my code, I have my analysis that I'm going through, I've got an outline where I can just kind of click back and forth and kind of go to different sections. Uh, I've got different functions that are showing up here if I need to go and adjust those functions quickly and I can do my analysis in a very systematic way. Then over here you can see, whoops, you can see that I've got my plot, my visualization. So I'm running a rolling um, uh, average and then I'm also comparing it to uh, another technique for time series and I'm doing it for nine different product lines at the same time just to see you know, kind of how these different modeling approaches uh, do prediction wise and try to get a, get a sense of how well they will predict. And you can see how long would that have taken me in a different programming language to, to analyze nine different product lines, the time series, to check out the seasonality and to compare how, uh, the, how well my modeling approach compares to a three month rolling average. That would probably be pretty difficult anywhere else. It's just this little bit of lines of code. I mean, it's really not a whole lot to be able to do this. And I've got my visualization right there in the right hand corner and I've got my entire analysis right here. So I love the RStudio ID. I think it's great. The other thing is we have a nice set of packages that all work well together. So when you're learning to code, which you will have to do if you're learning R, this is like, it's, it's like coding, but it's language. It's verbs, it's, uh, it's got the syntax that all kind of chains together. So just a little bit of terminology for you, this percent greater than percent, that's what's called the pipe. So you take your data, which is this thing right here, and I'm piping it into a verb, a verb that this, this function is called select. And what select does is it selects just two columns from this data frame, order date and total price. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my time series uh, data munging capabilities where I'm going to add a column or actually overwrite a column, the order date column, and I'm converting it to a year month day format. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab the, the month and year from that um, by flooring the date to the month. So what that does is if you're familiar with Excel, you've got floor and ceiling as functions. Floor date sends that date down to the lowest month. So it creates a year month feature that I can then group by and summarize the data. So this is, so what I'm doing is basically calculating the number of sales in each month. And then once I do that for um, all of the different product lines, I, I can just spit that out into my graph right here and I can compare that to my modeling. So a couple, couple points there. It's like writing a book or reading a book when you're writing code. You've got the verbs there that all mean something to you. And, it, and with this piping syntax, if I do something and if I mess up here, all I got to do is delete that. I just, and I still have what I saved up here. And this is the same kind of 
pipeline of data manipulations. So, that, so that's what these verbs, it's fast to go from thoughts, when I say thoughts up here, my ideas, to my code. I just have to remember a couple of different functions like select and mutate and group by and summarize. And those are some of the key functions that I learn. And then I can do visualization with ggplot2. And I can do it not just for one, you know, not, not just independently for one group, but I can do it for nine different groups or however many groups of customers I have. And that's what, you know, that's, that's just another reason that I, that I love R. Okay, so reason number four. Powerful ecosystem. So since I started R, we never used to have the big data tools that we have now, the machine learning tools, and this is really cool. And this is actually something that I want to uh, give to you guys today. If you're new coming to R, I wanna give you a cheat sheet that links up all of this entire tool system, this, this integrated tool chain of end-to-end -end data science. So you've got kind of like your data manipulation, visualization packages here. You've got your machine learning packages here. You've got your R markdown, which is your uh, reporting and your, and your shiny web apps packages here. So I'm gonna give you this thing called the ultimate R cheat sheet. And this is literally a one-stop shop for linking to all of the documentation, to all of the key packages if you're trying to learn R. It's, I teach it in, the, in my 101 course. It's really, really useful. And uh, we'll go through an example of how you would use this to uh, get to the data table package for high performance uh, computing and uh, wrangling like we just did a learning lab last week on wrangling 4.6 million rows of data, 375 megabytes of file size. And so I'm gonna walk you through that process right now. So what you guys are gonna do is you're just gonna go to the business science website. So I'm just gonna go to business science and I'm going to go to my resources and under the cheat sheets, I'm gonna click that. And then right here is the R cheat sheet. And we also have a Python cheat sheet. We've got the business science problem framework. We've got a machine learning cheat sheet and we've got a uh, segmentation and clustering cheat sheet. But this is the cheat sheet that I'm gonna point you to because this is the most important one. You click that, I'm gonna type in my email address or I'm gonna click the download button. I'll just type in my email address and say, I want the cheat sheet, success, click continue. And that opened up off the screen so you can't see it, but I'm gonna open it up here. And this is a three page cheat sheet that actually links to all of the packages that I use on a daily basis. So uh, if I just start at the beginning, this is kind of the tidyverse, which has your dplyr, string r, uh, kind of like the core packages that I'm using, r markdown, shiny, uh, modeling packages here and so on. The second page has the shinyverse, which is for building web applications. So it's got its own little kind of like tidyverse-esque group of packages up here where you start by building, you add components, then there's some advanced concepts, there's testing, and then you publish your apps. Um, and then the third page is special topics. So this is things like time series, financial analysis, text and NLP, network analysis, geographic and geospatial analysis, machine learning and deep learning, speed and scale, and interoperability, and then some miscellaneous tools. So I'm gonna pick on data.table just because I, I used that one last week and people were just kind of blown away. So uh, if I want to get the cheat sheet, I'm gonna right click and I'm going to, or actually I'm just gonna click cheat sheet and off of my screen has opened up the data.table cheat sheet. So anywhere that you see a CS on that, on that ultimate R cheat sheet, so anywhere you see this CS, you click on that and it's gonna open up a PDF of that package. And these are the 80-20 tools, the functions that you need to learn if you're interested in learning that package. So uh, you can see that this is a two-pager, and if you learn how to do you know, certain things, you're going to be able to get up to speed pretty quickly with this package, okay? And then if you see the actual package underline, that's the documentation. So if I click this, it's opening up the documentation for data.table. And if I go to the wiki here, which is where the, um, on, for data.table, they store a lot of their training information. Uh, I can see down here, this is exactly how I use data.table in a bunch of different use cases. So it's kind of got a quirky syntax, but when I showed people on the learning lab last week, how they could do that, 
they were just blown away and we actually put it into practice on the learning lab. So they were, they were really excited for, about it. So that's how you would use it for data.table, but you can repeat this process for almost any package that has these links in here. Okay, so that was the ultimate R cheat sheet. It's got this great ecosystem. We picked on data.table. We showed you how uh, you could just click the CS here and that opened up the cheat sheet. And we showed how if you click the link here, that opens up this homepage. We went to the wiki and then we saw that there was some examples of how to use it. So you can do that for almost any package that is in that ecosystem. Okay, reason number five, it's designed for data products. And when I, when I say a data product, I mean web applications and I mean reports. So we saw a lot of web applications already, but I wanna talk about reporting. So when I'm talking about reporting, what RStudio comes with is this package called R Markdown. It's for business reporting. You create PDF or HTML reports, and you can do that in seconds. And actually, it's kind of like integrating text with code um, because you can put code chunks in, as you're building a document. You can, you can put these code chunks in there. And it's way better than Jupyter Notebooks. Let me tell you what. Like, honestly, if you do this in the RStudio IDE, you will be amazed how quickly it is to create an HTML report like this, where I have a heat map of my customer preferences in here, and I can send this to my boss and they can kind of explore data, and then they can see kind of, you know, which um, these, this customer segmentation that I just ran, they can kind of see, okay, this, this first cluster is buying mainly, you know, mid to low end, uh, uh, looks like these are mountain bikes. Um, and then this one is, or excuse me, this is road bikes. And then this one is, uh, the second cluster is mid to high end mountain bikes. So, so they can go through your report interactively. And then uh, with our markdown, you can also, uh, where is the report? Ah, here it is. And this is that same report in PDF. I've got my heat map here. I've got my, um, my, my ggplot visualization, and I've got the last visualization. But most important is it's got the executive summary and the, and the, the problem statement and the executive summary. And I can give this to an executive who's familiar with PDF format, and they can read that you know the same way that they would read any other PDF report or pretty much any business report that they get right now. So it's really good for reporting. Um, and then we did see also the shiny apps, so I'm not gonna um, reiterate on that. Sixth reason and final reason, strong community. So you're gonna need support when you start learning. I needed it, I became active in the open source community. That's one of the ways that I was able to get help when I was first learning. And it's just nice to know other people that are going through the same thing as you and they're coming from a similar background. So. R, R has a very strong community of support. A couple examples, if you follow Twitter, the RStatch hashtag, that is, if you just follow that hashtag, you will get so much information on all the new stuff that's going on with R, it's great. Uh, there's also R ladies, so if you're interested in get, if you're a female or if you're interested in getting involved with R ladies, uh, I can't tell you how fantastic this program is. They have, I think like, 70 or 80 or maybe they're up to 100 now, but they have 100 throughout the world, different organization. I can't tell you how many thousands or hundreds of thousands of people are involved in this, but it's, it's a huge thing. So if you're interested in that, you've got another kind of community that you can get involved with. Uh, and then you can also uh, do what I do, which is I go to a lot of conferences and meetups. So uh, there's a ton of our conferences that are out there. Um, and then kind of one of the nice things that I started doing recently and that I've found so much value in is actually through business science. What I've done is um, started a social community for anyone that's enrolled in the R track program. So as they're learning R, they're able to interact with other students. They're able, able to interact with the more advanced students. They're able to interact with me. Um, also Aaron Liddell of H2O is in there. Uh, we just had Kristen Kerr. Uh, sign up and I think we just we even just had a, a, a Kaggle Grandmaster um, he, he just enrolled in the program too so we've got a ton of knowledgeable people in there that are all super excited to help you because they want to see you succeed 
So um, that's just another way that if you're interested in uh, the business science programming, we've got a social community there and it's, it's, uh, it's doing really, really well. Okay, so we talked about six reasons now and um, you know, it was, there's a lot to take in there. There's a lot to learn. And if you're coming though from a business background or maybe a mechanical engineering like I did or industrial engineering, or a non-computer science background, then R is probably the right choice for you. It was for me. I was so excited when I when I finally learned R, and I can, you know, I, I can't tell you how happy I am when I made that decision to learn R, and it's really helped me in my career uh, by providing the business what it needs, which is results. So if that sounds like you, then I want to uh, extend an offer to be able to help you learn. I, I physically, I want to teach you how to learn R. And the things that you will get out of this is you will become very fast. You will pick up R very quickly. You will learn by doing business first projects. And it, we have a, a program that's designed to be as effective as possible. And, and we have 80, 20 tools. I teach, you've already seen the cheat sheet that I teach off of, and I have several other cheat sheets that I teach. Uh, we have a very kind of streamlined program in order to be able to teach you how to do what I do, which is business consulting, uh, very fast. So uh, if you want to build these, which are uh, expert applications, this is not something that you just jump right into. Uh, this is something that will take a little bit of time, but you can do it very quickly. I'm, and I'm honestly, like I'm talking months, like you will be able to learn R, you'll be able to learn all the technology to be able to build these apps. In fact, I'm going to be teaching these in the expert web app course that we're going to be launching in about six weeks time. So there's two apps that are coming. That's the employee attrition app that we saw demoed here today. We also saw the portfolio stock optimization application that I'm going to be teaching both in the same course. And if you want to be able to do that, how do you do that? Well, we all start at the beginning, which is we don't know very much about R. And there's nothing to be, you know, we all start there. So just realize that you're, you are not alone. What we, ha what we do from that point, though, is different. So if you want to learn as fast as possible, and this is based on how I learned, you know, remember, I, I, I learned by building the tidy quant package. But you don't have to build something like that to be able to learn how to program R. What you can do is do the uh, do business projects. And what I call this is climbing the hill. You start by the basics, learning some of the data cleaning and preparation. Then you get into visualization. Then you move on to functional programming. You start to learn how to do advanced machine learning and the really cool like H2O automated machine learning, 50 models in two, sec in two minutes. And then the thing that the organization gets the big benefit out of, which is the shiny web apps and the R markdown reports, the data products that you're gonna produce. So you have to learn that process and it's like, it's kind of like climbing a hill because you just have to start at the basics and then you work your way up. And then once you get pretty confident that you move on to building your data products, which is where you need to focus if you want to be able to generate business value. And then once you get through that part of the process, then you need to continuously learn. So there's all sorts of, you know, you saw that page three, right? There's so many different topics like time series, like, uh, building APIs, uh, high performance data, uh, special machine learning. You need to be able to, to have a kind of a mechanism to continuously learn those new things that are coming out and especially because it's rapidly evolving. So to do that, we've designed a system or I've, des I've designed a system based on that learning process that I kind of went through. And I've streamlined it a lot, so it's not gonna take you years to learn it. It's gonna take months or weeks. And uh, basically, we've got the analysis courses. There's two of them. Uh, there's the 101 and the 201, uh, where you learn pretty much all of the data science and you follow these actual kind of like business consulting projects where you're having to segment customers to help you know, the marketing group uh, analyze their email um, campaigns. You're having to uh, solve a, a, a employee churn problem that we saw um, that, that was actually the basis for that web application. Um, so you're, you're actually solving real world projects that you are going to be tasked with doing. They're very similar to what you're gonna be tasked with doing in the real world. 
Um, and then we have our second set of courses, which are, are the 102 and the 202 courses. And these are your, your intermediate apps and then your expert apps. So the expert apps is coming in six weeks, but the beginner apps is available now. And once you start learning how to do those apps, that's what is going to help your business out. So when you're able to uh, build an app and, you know, say you build 12 apps a year, which is not unreasonable, you know, one a month takes a couple hours to a couple days to build an app. You can certainly do that many. And that is going to drastically improve how quickly you can uh, scale your impact to the organization and uh, help them make better decisions. And then we have this, uh, so we have two of those app development courses. And then to continuously learn, we've just launched this new program. We, um, we're getting ready to do the 14th Learning Lab, which is a one hour course. And uh, they're on special topics, like uh, the last one was on data.table where we wrangled 4.6 million rows of data. We spent an hour kind of going through the package and, and teaching students how to, how to use data.table. So that's the platform uh, in a nutshell. Um, I do want to focus primarily on the three course R track system. So if you want to speed up your learning as fast as possible, and if you you're, you think you um, R is the right choice for you, then this system is going to get you there as quickly as possible. So you got the 101 course, you got the 201 course, and you got the 102 course, and soon to be the 202 course. And so these these two are the analytics. So you're learning data science and machine learning, uh, and advanced machine learning and business consulting. And then th this is the first app course, and then I have the expert app course coming soon, where you're gonna be learning how to build these two apps. So if you wanna learn how to build these two apps, you gotta take the program. You're not gonna, you're, um, this, this is going to streamline that process to being able to build high-end web applications that literally organizations like that mining company that, that our consultant friend is working with are paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to do. So these are the apps that will be able to solve those business problems. Um, these are just some details about the courses. Uh, they are longer in format, meaning it will take you about seven weeks to get through the first one. Uh, but you will learn data, data science, uh, machine learning, uh, time series text categorical. There's eight hours of just on machine learning in week six. Uh, and then there's also business reporting where you're creating two project reports that uh, are your projects for the course. Um, the next one is the advanced machine learning and business consulting. Again, very time intensive. It's going to take about 10 weeks to get through. So weeks one through four, you're doing kind of the project setup, business understanding. You're learning some special techniques. Uh, you're learning exploratory data analysis, how to prepare data, correlation analysis completing three different challenges. Then weeks five, six, and seven, you're doing automated machine learning, which is where you're learning how to model churn. The same model that went into that employee attrition application, this, this uh, employee attrition app right here, the same model that drives this is what you're learning in this course here, which is the, the 201, the advanced machine learning and business consultant. Um, and then the 102, you're learning some applications, uh, which are kind of intermediate applications. They are uh, meant to be, they're, they're definitely usable in an organization, but they're not quite as powerful as applications like these. So this, but this is what you need to learn before you get to that higher level of, of uh, expert applications. Okay, so if you wanna build these data, data products, the system is designed to help you We've had a, a ton of success stories. We have, um, I think 105 people have written reviews or, or filled out the form for the, the 201 course now. And they're all, you know, the, the, the majority of these uh, reviews are all kind of like this. Your program allowed me to cut down 50% of the time. I can already apply a lot of the, the work or the, uh, the gains that I'm, I'm learning. My work became 10 times easier. I can spend quality time asking questions rather than wasting time trying to figure out the syntax. And those are just a sampling of the students that are having success. All right, so David's actually gonna give you a special promo code right now. It's not this one that I have listed here. This one is for 15% off. He's gonna give you one for 20% off uh, in the chat. And 
What that's going to do is that's part of our flash sale. I have not announced it yet. It's going to be announced tomorrow morning, but the link is live now. So if you want to uh, get into the program, definitely join in. Uh, that link is going to be live until Saturday morning. So Saturday, it's going to go dead. Uh, so you have a couple of days to think about it. But the, um, the main thing is, is that if you want to start learning R, this is the best system that's out there. It's going to get you exactly where you want to go as quickly as possible. Um, okay, so other than that, I look forward to helping you on your journey. I hope you, hopefully you learned a lot about what exists out there with R. Um, I'm available to take any questions now that you guys may have. And, okay. uh, and th thanks for chiming in and listening. I just wanna add something really quick. So um, there's, a, there's a, several people that were asking, you know, I'm a beginner in R, you know, how do I go from beginner, where do I start? One thing I'd like to say is there is a student uh, in the chat and he says he's in a master's program for data science and Matt's business science classes are way better, way more cost effective and you learn much faster. So I think, I think that actually speaks to a lot about what you're saying, Matt, just the program, th these courses are structured in a way to help you learn the most um, important uh, features of the language and, and being, you know, doing data science. And it's done in such a way that it, it, you don't learn like all the theory and stuff at once. You, you kind of learn the skills through a project. And it's a real world project, a real business challenge. Um, and as you go along and step through the challenge, the courses take you through um, the process of dealing with data problems. So importing data, cleaning data, uh, analyzing, visualizing, modeling, and then you know trying to, to determine the accuracy of your model. So anyway, uh, Matt, you wanted to say something? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, that's, that's, you're exactly right, David. I mean, the, the key with the courses is that if you want to learn R, you know, generally speaking, most programs out there do it the opposite way that we do. They teach you how to, they teach you the different functions, right? What we do is different. We teach how to solve a problem. And yeah, you're gonna integrate a bunch of different functions, but you learn those over time by getting the repetitions and actually seeing how they integrate into that problem solving process. So while you're focused on solving a business problem, your, your, you know, your muscle memory and you're actually learning how to use all of these different functions in the process because you know, you're seeing them be applied and then you're following along applying them as we go through it. So it's, it's really kind of, uh, it takes the weight off of, um, off of learning the language and, and puts it more on learning how to solve a business problem with the language. And that's, I hope, you, I hope, I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's exactly what I was, what I was getting at as well. And, um, oh, and then the last piece I just wanted to say was, uh, the shiny apps that you saw today, the, particularly the HR one, that one is done in the 201 course, right? The, the, so yeah, the one, yeah, so you actually make, you make this visualization and you make the prediction using H2O. So if you guys want to see kind of, this is the, the code that runs that app. And uh, if you could see, see it in the viewer, this is the app that's actually being run. Um, but we're using H2O, Lime. Um, these like this is actually running to make the predictions and you build that in the, the analysis course, which is the 201 and the 202, which is coming out is going to teach you how to build this app then with that model that you've created in 201. And then it's also going to teach you how to build the, um, uh, the other, the other app too. This, this one here, the stock portfolio optimization where you've got the 3d plot and, uh, and shows you how to optimize the, the portfolios. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So let me go to questions. There's a couple I'm, I need to type out the answers. So let me give you one, Matt, and then I'll, I'll answer some of these others. Um, Kim, oh, Mark was asking earlier, he, he said he's, he comes from Power BI, he publishes reports to Office 365 uh, service to, to distribute. Um, how do you deploy Shiny apps and how is it hosted? Sure. Yeah. So shiny apps, I mean, there's a couple of different ways, probably um, for depending on the size of your organization, 
most enterprise organizations are using this thing called R Studio Connect, which is just a it's a one click publishing platform. Um, so if I wanted to deploy this app, I would click this button right here, and then I would just click this publish button, and it would link it up. I have it going to shinyapps.io, but what it would actually go to um, if you have an R Studio Connect account is your R Studio Connect server, and it would basically publish it on a, either an internal web or, or extra, could be externally facing or, or whatever. Um, so that's how you can do both client facing apps and you can also do uh, internally facing apps. So like this employee attrition prevention, that would be an internal, internally facing app that you would give to like managers and you train them on how to use it. But you can also do that for uh, external clients as well. Okay. Um... What are, Gustavo asks, what are the minimum requirements as far as statistical knowledge to fully take advantage of the courses? That's it, a good, good question. Honestly, there is, uh, the, the, if you start with the 101, then there is no requirements. You don't have, have to have any experience required. I take you through all of the process of setting up our studio, of getting you started with your analyses, of walking you through all of the, the analysis and everything. Um, I will say that as long as, like if you're comfortable with Excel, meaning that you've used the, you know, the average function, the sum function, you know, those types of things, that's all the statistics you really need. So if you're, if you've ever heard of a standard deviation, kind of understand the concept of standard deviation and, and mean, then, then you're good to be good to, good to go. It's really not meant to be, it's meant to be pretty much almost uh, anyone can take it. Okay, um, let's see. They're, they're all kind of rolling in at the same time, so I'm reading as I go along. Yeah, that's all right, fire away. Aditya asks, um, what's the course fees for Business Science 201? I think there's a couple of people who maybe already in 101 and they mm -hmm. want to continue on. Um, they're trying to figure out, does the code apply to the others individually, yeah. or is it just specifically for the three package. No, th this is actually a site wide code. So you can actually use it for any of these courses here as well. The learning labs. Yeah. The learning labs. Yes. That's, yeah. that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, yeah if, if you, if you've already purchased one course and you want to get the others, um, use the learning labs promo code at checkout. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the key is, is that the prerequisite for 201 is the 101 course. And the prerequisite for once I come out with the, once we release in six weeks, the 202 course, it's going to be the 102 course. So you need to have that foundational kind of skill set before you move into this, unless you're advanced with R already, and then you can kind of just jump into it. Uh, we definitely, when, when I first launched this course, we had a ton of people that jumped into it. Um, most of them fared out well, but a lot of them had to kind of go back and take the 101 to, to then fully take full advantage of, advantage of the 201. And the same thing is gonna happen once I, once I release 202, we're gonna have some people that kind of go from 201 right into 202, and they're gonna be like, oh crap, I need mm. the 102. So just keep that in mind. If you do it starting with the 101, you're gonna be good. Yeah. Okay, um, I'm gonna answer this one. Uh, there's no, you don't have to finish the courses in a certain time. You watch at your own pace. Uh, you have lifetime access to it. You can start it, you know, go on vacation, come back. You don't have to worry about rushing through it. Right. You also get access to the Slack channel where all the other students are, and it's a very active channel. Yeah, uh, I, I can show you that, uh, the Slack channel, um, just today. And let me make sure I go to the right one. Okay. So, so this is uh, Johnny O, he just posted at 12.51 p.m. today. Uh, hey, he's the Kaggle kernel master that just joined. Um, we've got uh, 14 hours ago, you know, this, this is an active topic right now, how to deploy Shiny apps. Uh, do I need Shiny server? Uh, or we have a web development team, so on. So this is like where you can go to get your questions answered. And this is so you don't, have that situation where you start taking these course and then all of a sudden, you know, you run into a problem and you quit. Like that is not how this is the, the program is designed. It's actually very community oriented. Uh, you can see here there's 399 just in this introductions 
If I go to the announcements, there's 395. So we've got a ton of students that are, there's 402 in this one, um, a ton of students that are in the Slack channel that are able to help you. And I'm in there too, actively fielding questions because I want you to succeed. Yeah. Um, Roddy asked uh, about Python. He was saying that there had been some discussions in the past about upcoming Python course. Um, and he just wants to know what the future of Python is with business science. So, so Python's still very important and we definitely want to hit Python, but right now what is the most important is completing the R track. And then in the near term, uh, I've been getting a ton of requests for time series, which is one of my areas of expertise. So that seems to be, there's a big void right now where people don't know how to do time series. So it looks like that's going to be the, the next course that's directly following um, the course where we, we build these apps here. So Python down the road, definitely going to target it. But for right now, ours is the way to go, especially if you're coming from a, you know, kind of the background that I had. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's just see. I think that might be this one. Um, I think, oh man, they're, <laughs> they're still rolling in. Okay. I'm trying, I'm trying to go back to some of the older ones because I don't want people to feel left out. Uh, Brian was asking, I didn't see this, but he says, can you talk about the correlation funnel? I didn't, oh. I, I may have totally missed that slide. Um, yeah. Yeah. So the correlation funnel. So that's, um, kind of my new uh, little side project. Um, it's this package here. Uh, it is experimental. I'm still, you know, kind of building it and making and test, well, mainly testing it right now. But um, the idea is, is that if you have data and you want to be able to uh, understand that data and, and um, perform, say, exploratory data analysis, what most people do is they go through, so this is just, um, this is actually a small data set. It's only 45,000 rows, but it's only 18 columns. But even that can still take f about three or four hours to analyze if you go through each one of these features, comparing it to this target, which is trying to get people, um, it's a marketing campaign, trying to understand if they're, who's enrolling into the, uh, the term deposit uh, financial product. So it's, um, you know, it kind of like the, the slow way to do it <laughs> or the old way to do it is to look at each one of these and kind of um, assess the correlation. But um, what we can do with the correlation funnel is it's got this nice little streamlined um, process where there's only three functions that you have to learn. Uh, you, you first binarize it, turn it into zeros and ones, and it and actually continuous features it bins so it'll bin those into so that way it's not uh, taking the correlation of, of something that might have a nonlinear correlation or a nonlinear um, relationship so uh, then we do a correlation analysis and then we can visualize it and for this particular campaign uh, the duration uh, feature is the highest correlated and you can see that uh, and that's the term deposit so people who are enrolling in this term deposit program are spending um, 319 to or, or more seconds interacting with the campaign. Uh, they are also have a previous outcome, meaning they are a previous customer of success. And if they have unknown or failure, it's kind of got a negative correlation. Um, uh, contact, cellular contact was the, the highest correlated to success. Um, have they ever per, uh, purchased a housing loan? And if they haven't, they're more likely to do a term loan, which is a you know fi another financial product. If they have, then they're less likely, and so on. So you you get to these insights really quickly using this correlation funnel approach. Again, it's only three functions, and you get these nice visualizations, and you can filter them down, uh, and you can basically kind of point you in the right direction with with your exploratory data analysis. And as we know in business. The exploratory data analysis, the insights that we're seeing, that's far more important than the prediction. So this helps you get those insights faster. Okay, and then uh, we'll do this, the last few questions. These should be pretty quick. Um, uh, Lewis was asking, um, he wanted to know if, if in the future, Business Science University will move to a platform focused on 
corporations and in academia to deliver courses? Um, at the moment, we're primarily focused on building courses that our current customers uh, have been asking for. Mm -hmm. So, so really, um, the business model that we have, it's all, you know, business science is a little bit different than the, the data camps, the um, uh, Coursera's. What we're trying to do is do advanced, get you to the point, the students to the point where they can do advanced analytics, like actual real world apps through our program. So that's the goal. So the customer base for that right now is people that, you know, want to be able to do that. Um, and the organizations, I think the organization piece, you know, that'll come probably with time, but we're not actively trying to pitch that to um, corporations. Conversely, what we're doing is we're holding these webinars because we've seen the data scientists you know, really gravitate towards pro our, our program after they get a chance to kind of understand what we're all about and, um, and, and kind of share in the success and, and kind of decide for themselves you know, whether or not they fit the program, the mold for the program, or, or whether or not the program seems like it would be a good fit for them. Okay, and then, um, oh, this is a good one. Um, what's the average age of students, in my mind, in my, in my mid-40s and find myself in courses where younger students have much stronger coding programming background, and the pace of those courses can be quite fast? Yeah, I, I, that age, we have uh, at least two people in the course that have actively reached out to me telling me that they're 50 or more years old. In fact, Neil Chapman, um, he just posted on LinkedIn that he just turned 50 and he got his first data science job. So he's a student in the course. Um, there's also another one, uh, I think, who's 51, uh, 52. So, you know, it's... it's Age is is not a uh, an issue. You're going to be good as long as you understand. Again, the business problem, and you're focused on that. The coding is going to come. It's just a matter of kind of getting you into first getting our studio, you know, on your computer. Once we get through that, then it's getting you through your first kind of mini analysis, where you get to see some of the tools kind of come together, and you'll be able to learn it. I mean, I have no doubt. And I don't think age is, is, uh, is, is any sort of thing to be worried about. Yeah. And then you also go at your own pace. There's a, there's a lot of content in the courses. Um, so when Matt says seven weeks or 10 weeks, it's kind of an estimate, but you don't have to finish it at that pace. You can go, you can take your time and go a little slower. You can go back and rewatch, um, some of the older modules if you've kind of forgotten something. Um, and if you started the 101 course, you'll be just fine because it, it's for complete beginners. You don't have to have any prerequisites. Yeah, exactly. And, and the, th the other thing too is if, um, say you have, you know, a week where you just want to uh, kind of, you know, double time it, like you, you can go faster too. So it's, all, yeah. it's always up to you. Uh, the courses are complete, completely flexible and you have access to them for the lifetime. So once you purchase it, you get it and all the upgrades for, for, you know, for as long as you want them. All right. And then the last question is Dale wants to know SQL versus R. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so, so the funny thing is if you learn R, you actually don't need to learn SQL and here's why. Yeah. Um, so there's this thing called DB plier, uh, which is, uh, so once you learn uh, D plier, which is, uh, the, the main data wrangling package, um, they have this thing called DB plier, which is the database backend. So you actually end up, uh, it'll translate your code to SQL. Uh, so all you need to do is write D plier code and it, it converts it to, um, to, to uh, SQL. So it's, there's just kind of like one extra step that you have to go through to use a function called collect. And, um, and, and once you collect it, uh, it'll pull it into your R memory. So you actually use the database, and this is the this is the, the code in R, uh, but it's actually being converted when it interfaces with the um, the SQL database to uh, SQL, and this is what um, it this is what that SQL server sees, and then when you hit the collect uh, function, 
it just pulls that data in and, and does this select, you know, these uh, from empty cars, group it by cylinder, order it by MPG descending. So that's what the output is. So learning R is very valuable because then you don't need to learn SQL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, and uh, actually, so we're going to take this this question because Mark, I think Mark put this up here a long time ago. I'm sorry, there's there's some other questions coming in, but this one will be the final one. And and he asks, um, uh, how did you uh, educate yourself to gain the business acumen? And I think what he's getting at is um, relating the data science to the business problem and, and getting the most value out of that and, and deciding on what it is you're going to be working on and presenting. Right. So, um, how, how I, like my specific journey, like I was already in the business analysis kind of mindset. So this was back probably 2011 timeframe when I got my first management job. Um, and then as I kind of climbed the ladder, I think in 15, I, I became a director. And then, um, uh, shortly before I quit, I had been promoted probably three times in the, in one year, um, because I was doing a lot with like R where I was getting the most benefit out of R, believe it or not, was by making these, um, these reports. So reports like this one right here, where I would analyze a segment of customers, or I would try and like like our, I knew our business had questions or I knew our business was running inefficiently or had kind of like a, a gut feeling and I had a hypothesis and then I would analyze the data and I would present it to my boss, which, you know, at the, at the time that I had, uh, uh, shortly before I left was uh, the CEO of the company and he was loving it. So basically what I was doing was building reports that others in our organization could not build. And I knew that it was what my CEO was really interested in. And also I was really interested in, uh, was understanding the customers better, understanding what we could be doing better in order to be able to improve sales. And then actually seeing the gains from those improvements actually hit the, hit the revenue. So that's what I was doing. That's how I did it. Um, and then I ended up uh, becoming a, a consultant after people got wind of the tidy quant package. And that kind of opened the doors to others that, you know, wanted to, um, you know, and, and, do, and doing like, honestly, like building this app, I put this on LinkedIn the other day. Uh, I, I got at least, uh, I got one guy that, that came to me saying, Hey, I want to, I want to buy that from you. I want you to build that for me. So that's the type of stuff you do this, you spend time kind of learning the, the system, going through the program. It's going to benefit you. It's you're, you're going to do a lot of things that you, things you can't even think of right now. You're going to be doing it in a couple of months from now. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's it for, for this one, guys. Thanks so much for sticking around. Um, and I hope you gotten a lot of value out of it because uh, it's exciting stuff. And one of the things I really enjoy about these types of um, presentations is you get to see the final product of the work and how others can interact with your work. That's, I think that's a lot of things that's missing from data science conversations. We talk a lot about the modeling and the analysis and all of that is a lot of fun, but uh, yeah. at the end of the day, business, businesses need to be able to use um, what you do for, to create some more value, so. Yeah, that's one thing, results, that's what they want. If, yeah. you know, we need to be able to provide that to them. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for, for joining us, guys, and we'll see you on the next one. Also, uh, this, this um, presentation will be available, so uh, we'll be sending out a link for it. Yep. Yeah, we're going to put this on YouTube, so it'll be available for everyone after the, um, after the call. Yeah. All right. Take care. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. See you later. Bye-bye.